everybody, I am Not Pug, and welcome to another Origin Showcase, where today we are going to be covering The Watcher Origin. The Watcher Origin is an origin made by yours truly that brings in a whole new system of eye security camera-like powers, as well as new stealth components that makes the game super super fun. And without further ado, let's get into the Origin Showcase. The Watcher, a shy yet mischievous being covered in eyes from head to toe. This creature known as the Watcher stalks its prey, and if it's caught, it has a few tricks up its sleeve to make a quick escape. This origin will always keep others looking behind their backs. So, for the first power, we have Eyelings. Using spider eyes, you can place down eyelings. Each eyeling will cost one heart to place. Using primary, you can view from your eyelings perspective or exit the viewing mode. Using right click, you can change which eyeling you are viewing. Using primary while sneaking while not viewing your, through your eyeling will kill all eyelings. If you use primary while sneaking while viewing, you will sacrifice all eyelings to teleport to the current eyeling you are possessing. So. That was a lot of words, so let me condense it for you. To start off, right-clicking a block will place an eyeling, and if I go in survival, you can see that each one does cost a heart from my total health. So, at a maximum of five, I can have five hearts left over. These eyelings look towards the nearest entity, so if I throw an item, they will be looking at that. And vice versa, if any other player or mob comes near them, they will be looking at that. Like the origin described, if I press primary, I will go to my eyelings. So as you can see right now, I left behind a big eyeball that is emitting sound effects and blood. This is your body. So anything that damages your body will take you back to your body. But in this state, I can view through my eyeballs, but I do have half a heart. So you gotta be careful. And like the origin said, if I shift and use primary, I will kill all my eyes. So that killed that one eye right there. Place two, I can do both at that same time. So you can get your health back if you really need it. All right, now that I have two eyes placed, if I go into my first eye, pressing right click will let me go to the other eye and vice versa. So as you can see, I can switch between the camera views, no matter the distance or dimension. And last but not least, if I am in a camera and I shift and use primary at the same time, you will kill your body and all remaining eyes at the cost of teleporting. So this is a good way to transport, kind of like the doorman, but with a few more downsides. As you can see, I did get darkness, weakness 10, and slowness 4 for 5 minutes. And due to other debuffs that this origin will have, you cannot drink milk to just get rid of that. Overall, having these powers with the eyelings is super powerful, but yet fun. So, like before, you can place them, you can do whatever you want, and even teleport to them on a long cooldown, of course. All right, for our next power, we have Splice. You are able to splice yourself into a smaller eye. While small, you move faster, can climb blocks, at the cost of three hearts. However, you are unable to deal damage, use eyelings and items. So if I shift and use secondary, I will shrink. I'm about the size of a half slab, but I do get the ability to climb and run around, which is pretty useful. One downside that comes with this is you cannot use anything with right clicks besides blocks. So if I want to eat, I cannot eat. The only thing you can use are your eyelings and blocks. But 
you cannot access your eyelings. So if you press primary while in mini mode, which is what I like to call it, you cannot access them. You can simply place them and kill them. And like the description also said, you do lose three hearts. So now I'm at a total of seven. So if you have all five eyes down, one, two, three, four, five, you'll be reduced to two maximum of health. So be careful. And if you really need health, you can kill your eyes and get some more. All right, for our next power, we have Stalking Stare. By sneaking while looking at an entity for a prolonged amount of time, you can paralyze them for a small duration. But once you do, they know where you are. So, and I'll explain why I'm transparent later in the video. <laughs> but anyways, so if I'm sneaking and looking at a villager, you can see this white bar going up. If I look away from it, it will drain super fast. So it is very hard to use in combat, but if you're sneaking on something and spying from a distance, it is pretty easy to do. And now we're almost there, so once it's full, it will force them to look at you and it will give them darkness and slowness, which basically is paralyzed. They can move a little bit, but not too much. So overall, it's a small but useful ability that can basically just paralyze something that you're looking at from a distance. So it's pretty good for SMPs where you want to be sneaky but also scary, or just a fun useful ability for something from a distance. Alright, for our next power we have Retina Scan. You can scan for nearby enemies, revealing their positions. So, if I summon a few pigs over here, maybe just three I'd say, if I use my secondary ability without sneaking, it will reveal the positions of all entities within 30 blocks. So even if I move away, it will keep updating that for a small duration. But once it's over, then you have a decently long cooldown. So overall, it's a pretty useful ability, but it's a little simple too. So pretty good for looking through walls or finding something. Additionally, you can use this while in camera mode. So. If you are using secondary, you can spy on anything nearby, but be wary, doing this will make a loud sound so people will know that you're spectating this camera. All right, for our next power is Lurker. You do not make noise when walking. So this one is a little confusing, but it is relatively simple nonetheless. So this basically means that you cannot activate skulk sensors when walking. So it does not actually get rid of the sound of you walking. So if you're trying to sneak up on someone while drinking an invis, they can still hear you. But what it makes it is so skulk sensors do not activate when you walk around them. Now, if you walk on top, they will still activate, of course, and anything else will also count. So placing blocks, breaking blocks, jumping, it all activates it still. So it can be a little bit more hasty around skulk sensors, but you still got to be a little careful. All right, for our next power is I Spy. You can see all. Anyone who is looking at you feels uneasy, gaining darkness and alerts you that they are watching. So this is very similar to the doorman's power, except it doesn't give them slowness. So if I walk in front of this creeper, you can hear some whispers emit from it, as well as some particles that only you can see. And from their perspective, they hear whispers and they get darkness, but nothing else. So a pretty small little power, but pretty fun nonetheless. All right, and for our last power, we have Shade Dweller. You prefer dark spaces. While in the dark, you gain speed to night vision and become semi-transparent. So like I said earlier in the video, that is why I'm transparent because it is nighttime. So, as you can see, I do run faster because I do have speed too. I am semi-transparent and I do have night vision. So, if I place a torch right here, it will actually get rid of my powers and slowly turn me back to normal. And if I remove it, same thing. I will go back to being transparent and speed too and night vision. So, not that powerful, but pretty useful nonetheless. Now, for our debuffs. For our first debuff, we have Cannibalism. Your kind thrives on cannibalism. 
As a result, you can only eat fermented spider eyes. Crafting fermented spider eyes is now cheaper and only costs one spider eye. So if I hover my mouse over this icon, you can see the recipe right there. Pretty self-explanatory. So if I go into my crafting menu, grab some spider eyes, I can turn it into, hey, get away. I can turn it into fermented spider eyes, which I can eat. So if I give myself some hunger, if I just hold right click, it will do a small animation and feed me. And if I am running, it also does give me the slowness effect, basically replicating the eating food mechanic. With that being said, that means you cannot drink milk, eat god apples, or any of your favorite foods. Only spider eyes. All right, for our next debuff, we have a pretty strong one, which is dry eyes. Your eyes are very sensitive to heat. You receive five times much fire damage, as well as automatically burn in the nether, unless you have fire protection four on your chest plate. All right, so if I just demonstrate right here, if I place down this fire, it does three ticks of damage, way more than what is normal. So now that we have the portal, we can go into the nether and probably do one of the dumbest things using this origin. If I enter the nether, I will automatically burn. I did fall there, but you could see that I took a lot of fire damage as well. So like the origin power said, if I do put a fire protection iron chest plate, well, it doesn't have to be iron, but a fire protection for chest plate, then I can effectively get rid of that small debuff in the nether. So while this does protect me from automatically burning, it does not protect me from the fire damage multiplier. So if I stand on this, it's way more. And it basically counts for anything that's fire, whether it's flaming arrows, magma blocks, lava, you name it. All of it is deadly to you. All right, now that we're back in the overworld, let's see what our next debuff is. Our next debuff is sensitive eyes. You're unable to place anything on your head. So if I give myself an iron helmet, no matter how hard I try, I cannot place it. So this basically means that your armor value is pretty low because you cannot wear that helmet. Additionally, with the fire protection four debuff in the nether, consider yourself very weak in the nether. All right, let's get rid of that. And for our next debuff, we have blurry vision. Your eyes are sensitive to sun and water. Being underwater blurs your vision and being in the sun for too long makes you blind and weak. So if I stay under the sun, I have at most five minutes of time under the sun without debuffs. Once that time is up, I will get darkness and weakness. All right, so now that we've been in the sun for too long, you can see that I did in fact get my darkness, weakness, and slowness. So it is pretty bad underneath the sun. If you go under the water, it is basically the same as the sun debuff. So if I'm underwater for a certain amount of time, I can see perfectly fine. But after around nine seconds, it will come back. So you're not safe in the water or the sun. All right. And for our last debuff, we have isolation. You are 25% weaker when players are nearby, which is a 30 block radius. So right now I am perfectly normal. I can deal normal damage. All right, that has been the Watcher origin. My honest take is it's a pretty fun origin and it lets you do lots of things while punishing you for it. Want to have more cameras? Got to sacrifice some health. Want to shrink? Got to give some more. Want to be in the sun and touch grass? Yeah, no, you're not doing that. But it is pretty fun nonetheless. I am Nutpug, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.